tasks. Who's going to be the Republican nominee for president next year? Everybody's talking about it. I just came from a group of Republican governors in Colorado, and everybody's asking, who do we want? Who are we going to support? And I go back to this central question before us here today. Are we as a country going to rise to this occasion to reclaim our greatness? Or are we going to allow them in D.C. to continue to retreat to European socialism? As for me, I intend to vote for the candidate. I intend to support the candidate who understands what's really at stake here. The candidate who is best able to draw this contrast, a candidate who is able not to simply just run a good campaign or give a good speech, but a candidate who truly grasps the urgency of the situation, who realizes the hour is late, a candidate who makes no apologies for America but rather takes decisive action to embrace, enable, to grow the American dream. Just in case I wasn't clear on this earlier. America must reclaim our greatness. We must and we will. We must not, we will not retreat to European socialism. And by the way, the, this is important not only for America but for the world. When you think about it, we have saved the world now. We are in the process of saving the world. We have saved the world three times. Whether it was from the threat of fascism in the Second World War, whether it was the threat from communism during the Cold War, or now the threat from fundamentally fundamentalist Islamic terrorism in the current ongoing conflict. America's success is important for our children, but it is also important for our prosperous and free world as well. I know I've shared a lot, but my mom makes it real simple, and I'll close with this. My mom looks to me and says, son, you know, dad and I, we love you and we're proud of you. I said, thank you, mom. That's a nice thing for a mom to tell her son, by the way. She says, but make no mistake about it. If we had figured out a way to have had those grandchildren first? She said, well, you wouldn't be here today. And that's my mom's nice way of reminding me. It's not about you and me. This next election is so important because it's really about leaving to our children the legacy they deserve, the opportunity to grow up in the greatest country in the history of the world. Let's win this fight, not for ourselves, but for our children and our grandchildren. God bless you, and God bless the great state of Ohio. Thank you all very much for having me tonight. Well, Bobby Jindal's all right, isn't he? How about one more round of applause for Governor Jindal as he heads out? Thank you, Governor. I think we're going to see him around for a long, long time in Republican Party politics, and our country and our state will be better for it. Bobby Jindal, Governor Jindal, represents and serves as a prime example of a governor, quite candidly, along with our Governor John Kasich, as a governor who is leading the way to provide our states with pro-growth, low-tax, a pro-growth, low-tax reform agenda to create lasting, good-paying jobs for our families. That's what we need more of in America. We're proud to have that in Ohio. We're tickled to death to have a brand new friend in Louisiana who has made that pledge and made that agenda work for the last three and a half years with outstanding results. And again, Governor, we appreciate your willingness to come to Ohio and spend an evening with us. Our evening is quickly drawing to a close, but we cannot adjourn until we announce the winner of the 2011 Ohio Republican Party straw poll. The Ohio Republican Party has been in frequent contact with a number of the major presidential uh, uh, campaigns from across the country, and they all know that you all were taking part in a straw poll, and they all know, each of the candidates and their campaigns know what we have said so often here tonight, that no Republican has ever won the White House without winning Ohio. And so without further ado, I'll give you the top three finishers. Finishing in third place with 15% of the vote, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. <laughs> Finishing in second place with 16% of the vote, Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty. And finishing in first place with 25% of the vote, former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney.
Thank you, thank you uh, to each and every one of you. Thank you all for attending. Uh, it's time once again for Ohio to take its place in defining uh, its defining role of electing the next Republican president of the United States. Thankfully, your presence here tonight gets us started on that journey. Together, I know we'll be able to build upon our gains and our successes in 2010, make that history again in 2012, and keep Ohio moving forward. Please be safe getting home. Thanks again, and good night.